in one of the most watched primaries this year, Representative Cori Bush, among the first members of Congress to do what? Had the audacity to call for a ceasefire. Yeah, to stop killing people. Lost to a prosecuting attorney named Wesley Bell, who jumped in the race late. And with the backing of millions of dollars from pro-Israel groups, won. Bell dropped out of his bid to dethrone Republican Senator Josh Hell, um, Hawley of Missouri and chose to challenge Bush soon after the war began in Gaza. Now, naturally, this was coordinated behind the scenes political play here. Bell has benefited from an incredibly well-funded advertising campaign since then. According to Media, I, the American Israeli Public Affairs Committee, APAC, sent $8 million to back Wesley Bell in that race. APAC would gloat over Bush's loss. With the tweet, quote, congratulations to pro-Israel progressive leader Wes LaBelle on your victory tonight against anti-Israel squad member, Representative Cory Bush. Being pro-Israel is good policy and good politics. However, Bush would have pointed words for APAC during her concession speech. Here it is. Pulling me away from my position as Congresswoman. All you did was take some of the strings off. <laughs> Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Because see, now I don't have to worry about some strings that I have attached as much as I love my job. But all they did was radicalize me, and so now they need to be afraid. I don't think that anything, there is nothing that happens in my life that happens in vain. So if this happened, it's because it was meant to happen. And let me say, it's because of the work that I need to do, and let me say this. That's how you get fired. <laughs> That's how you do it, damn it. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. I mean, so many individuals who are in Congress are so afraid of losing that damn job. It's just a job. And it's, it's not even a job where you're not getting millions. You don't have to say your soul, obviously. It's just a job. I would lose a job any day of the week to do what's right. I was proud of her words. I'm thankful for her stance. And so many of us, we will say, we want leaders who will stand up, do what's right, speak truth to power. Now, you do realize the vast majority of Americans call for a ceasefire. The vast majority of Democrats call for a ceasefire. The vast majority said what was happening was wrong. She had the audacity to do it as a member of Congress, and she loses her job. The truth is, all members of Congress knew and know what's happening is wrong. The ones that are spoken up are the ones that are not only battle tested, their integrity is intact both inside and outside. Those who decided to hold it in, those are the individuals who are willing to compromise. Compromise a little bit here, a little bit there. You see, you can't really make true transition, transformation, and change without having people who are willing to lose their jobs over it. So she is no longer going to serve after this term. There, um, let's put up one of the tweets here Stop anti Semitism. Um, you know, her calling for a ceasefire did not seem antithetical to um, the Israeli people. As a matter of fact, most Israelis disagree with Benjamin Netanyahu and his tirade. Last night, uh, they said last night's sore loser, Cori Bush lashing out Jews over her 
uh, Jews, lashing out at Jews over her embarrassing defeat. APAC, I'm coming to tear your kingdom down. And then up next, uh, naturally, Congresswoman Omar, um, August 13th, question mark. Then racist language would be used in celebration of her loss. One person said, how did this gangbanger even swindle her way into politics in the first place? She's, she's literally showing exactly why she's unfit in this speech. Bye, Felicia. Hello, Mr. Bell. Um, APAC does not represent the Israeli people, Israeli citizens. They are a special interest group on behalf of the interest of the government of Israel, which by the way is antithetical to the sentiment of most Israelis. Let's put it up. Huggins said, let's be clear, your ghetto hating, your ghetto hating Jew asses out. Take your fake synthetic braids and get them out of our government, you racist squatty waddy. Previously, APAC had donated 1.6 million to George Latimer to unseat Mr. Jamal Bowman for doing the exact same thing, calling for a ceasefire, saying what was happening was a humanitarian crisis, saying what the vast majority of people in this country said was happening. In addition, APAC spent at least 14.5 million on anti Bowman ads through its affiliated PAC, United Democracy Project, per Federal Election Commission filings. Some estimates appraise APAC's total spending in this race as close to 20 million. Is APAC going after Omar next? Though Omar has expressed similar views about Israel Hamas war, APAC and UDP have largely stayed out of this primary race. Omar has significantly outraised Samuels entering July with 1.8 million cash on hand after raising 1.6 million in the second quarter of the year. Her campaign announced Samuels entered the same period with just over 334,000 cash on hand and raised 535,000 in the second quarter. His campaign said polls have shown that Omar is ahead in this, uh, is ahead in, in her primary uh, Excuse me, Omar is ahead of her opponent in the primary race with a Lake Research Partners survey conducted between the 17th to 21st of July. It showed her within, um, she's at 60 points, um, support to Samuel's 33%. A Victoria Research and Consulting poll uh, from February put the Congresswoman at 49% to her opponent's 30%. They may have made a political calculation here and said, listen, we don't have enough money to overcome those odds. All right, um, here's what. Here's what I really don't like, the mischaracterization, the mischaracterization. How does someone become anti-Jewish community for being pro-humanitarian? And, and let me say this another way, Donald Trump goes on podcast and he says, if you vote Democrat, you're a bad Jew. That's what the man said. That's what the, the host said he's agreeing. You're a bad Jew. Um, the vast majority, the majority of Jews in America vote Democrat. They vote left leaning. So how is it that Trump is not anti Semitic? But someone who says there should be a ceasefire for humanitarian aid, how are they anti Semitic? I don't get it, this sister. Can you help me? I can help you. I don't understand it. That's the thing that has been plaguing this entire issue since its outset, is how can people who are saying we want less people to be killed, we want less innocent children to be killed, and we want less schools and hospitals bombed, somehow we're the bad guys for saying things like that. This is all very, very sad, but unfortunately, it's not surprising at all. We've seen it happen before, and I think we might see it happen again. But we know why it happened, because the people who are working in this country on behalf of a foreign entity have so much money and they're interfering in our elections very publicly and unapologetically and no one is saying anything about it. But yes, this conversation should be about money in political campaigns. We should be talking about that. We should be talking about that as, an, as a nation all the time. However, the people who would be able to make those changes are the ones benefiting from it.
Do you think the guy who is replacing Cory Bush on the ticket is going to overturn APAC or any other moneyed interest in politics? No, he's not going to because without them, he never would have won. We worked so hard to get Cory Bush, an actual progressive, elected into Congress. And all of that went to hell because her one position on one specific issue, a position that, again, the, mass, the vast majority of American support was not in line with what this one special interest group wanted. But I love what she said about her strings being off. A lot of great people would rather do their public service outside of the halls of Congress. She is now unencumbered by bureaucracy. She doesn't need to worry about reelection. And one of my absolute favorite things in the world is a good politician who is no longer worried about reelection. They're free to do the work that they were elected to do without having to endure their critics. So I'm very excited to see what Cori Bush gets up to in the next coming years because you know it's going to be good.